I don't know if y'all heard that or not, but um, my neighbor's going crazy. Anyway, what's up with my people? How we all doing? Today's episode is going to be a little bit laid back. I'm um, extremely tired. It's the end of my day, but I uh, can't forget about my people. And uh, I'm just going to be answering questions, man. It's, uh, my brain my brain isn't ready to fire on all cylinders. And I'm going to smoke with y'all. What time is it? Mm. Midnight. You know what? I've been waking up around like 5 in the morning. Usually I only sleep like 4 hours every single night. But I've been waking up at 5 in the morning. I can honestly tell you guys that waking up, waking up when nobody else is awake that peaceful, quiet, that shit is like nothing else. Like I feel like I just have more focus just knowing that there's not too much going on. You know, like when you live in New York City, you could feel like the the noise level. Noise level feels like a vibration. And uh, at five, you can still hear like a like little slight rumble, but it's as peaceful as it's ever going to be. You know, uh, by nine o'clock, man, the horns like, uh, uh, and everybody's, you know, going about their day. So I've been enjoying it. So anyway, it's midnight. This is late for me, but this is when, this is when I got to do these. My bad. I I don't, I don't pay attention. I'm fucking horrible at this shit. Uh, all right. Um, did anybody see, uh, Maddie's new podcast? Somebody asked me what I thought about it. So I might as well ask you guys. The new uh, podcast on um, blood on the razor wire. I thought it was. I thought it was good. Um, you know, I'm not. I, I got to be honest with you guys. Maddie might. <laughs> Maddie might not like this shit, but uh, I don't know how I feel about them damn podcasts, man. I really don't. Um, and I don't feel like. Uh, and this has nothing to do with. Uh, blood on the razor wire i feel like honestly out of all of them he's probably one of the better ones you could tell that he's authentic you could tell he's really from it um it's just one of those things that i feel like if you're not really going to be able to really tell the full story in its entirety you probably shouldn't tell it at all you know because that platform youtube is just a place for entertainment and uh that entertainment value that standard has been set pretty high by people that are just willing to go on there and tell all and 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 tell shit that ain't even fucking true you know and if you guys have followed me from the beginning you guys know that I don't <laughs> I'm just not the one for that you know I can't believe I made it this this long in the rap game without <laughs> doing like some cloudish type of shit Fuck, man, it's been a long time. Somebody just told me that they've been tapping in since Whiskey and Rosaries, man. It's been over 10 years since Whiskey and Rosaries, man. And, um, you know, not doing any rapper shit. It's kind of like a gift and a curse. Like, I love it and I hate it at the same time. I wish I would have done more, of course, but I just chose a different direction. And I've never felt the need to prove myself you know i've i I did when i was younger especially being a white boy like i did like i was (laughs) i think i was extra out like in like um i think like towards the end of high school i think i was pretty extra but i grew up around all black people man like i like and when and when we like growing up around black people are extra (laughs) as fuck they know it too um (laughs) <laughs> they be doing the most, especially when it comes to dressing and shit like that. Like, um, they can make something out of nothing, though. Like, back in the day, when I was growing up with all my guys, like, we would borrow each other's shit. Like, we would make, <laughs> like, I'd be like, yo, like, give me your stunner shades. And be like, yo, let me rock them Jabos, all the shit. Like, um, my people know, like, Nico, Coke, JoJo, who else was around? Um, Armani, Shanti. Uh, Rebby. Um, man, we was all in a house. We was all in a house, man. That house used to be so crazy growing up. Single black mother. Uh, she was off the chain during this time too. 
um, it'd be like 10 motherfuckers in there at all times. Like, <laughs> just like the doghouse, man. Just a bunch of dudes fighting, laughing, like all types of shit, man. Like, I feel like motherfuckers got made, turned boys into men inside that home, man. Like, for real, for real. Who else is over there? Like, man, dude, like sometimes we'd have as many 20, 30. Uh, we was deep. <laughs> um, shit. Three more, four motherfuckers in a, uh, in a damn room. Motherfuckers sleeping on the floor. Shit, when um, when Miss Fawcett was out, it'd be like, yo, can I <laughs> bang this girl in your bed? All types of shit. But I would come home. Man, look, I never got this off. Nico, <laughs> one time I came home, man, my boy was in there <laughs> getting busy in my bed without asking. I was like, damn. Who's calling me? Hold on. I can't do this right now. Hold on. I'm in the middle of a podcast. Let me hit you back. It's all good. All right, all right, all right, bye. Um, nah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I feel like during that time growing up, I was extraed out, and I was always trying to prove myself. And um, even with the group of people I'm talking about, man, they tested me when I was first coming up. They found out pretty quick, though. <laughs> They found out pretty quick. But if you're a white boy and you're growing up in any other thing, like, you should be tested. You know? Because, like, I mean, there's bitches everywhere. But growing up, we just going to be chilling and chopping it up if that's all right. I feel like I'm on a goddamn Instagram live. By the way, I am going to be doing a live one of these pretty soon. When I feel like I got enough people in the circle in the huddle, we're going to be doing this shit live. So you guys could literally interact with me while I'm doing this shit. But, um, yeah, I feel like growing up, uh, some of the white boys in Vallejo, man, were just <laughs> bitches, <laughs> period, man. There wasn't too many of us that was pushing that line, trying to hold the fucking name down. <laughs> there wasn't, and we wasn't even on no, like, we wasn't even on no, like, white boy shit. Like, uh, we all knew each other, you know what I'm saying? Like, the white boy shit. Motherfuckers got the white boy shit so fucked up, and that's intentional too. Like, we don't want to speak on it um, because it really doesn't have any place here for the in the music and all this type of shit. The, the, nah, 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 nah. I feel like out of all of that, like that that real shit or that prison shit or whatever it is, the white boys are probably the most serious <laughs> when it comes to pushing their line. But it's not even just it's not even just serious like that. It's also they don't give a fuck about rap. They don't give a fuck about the clout shit. They don't care about any of that. Um, so, um, so yeah, but uh, we wasn't even on no, like, white boy shit. I would see motherfuckers from other neighborhoods and shit. It'd be, like, one white boy there, two white boys. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> when the white boys were all clicked up and shit like that in the V, I can't say this for every, because I don't know every single one. Like, when I was growing up, they wasn't even hard like that. Like just being just being real. It was them one or two out of them hoods and shit like that. Like the crest had a few. Who else? I mean, they all did. Um the Ville had one. Uh obviously the Mac the Mac had two. Um but yeah, nah. Yeah, the Mac I think I think the Mac had obviously I'm biased. <laughs> Cause I think I'm the coldest. But um nah man, we had some we had some real white boys, but nah, there were some real bitch ass white boys though. Man, dude, especially going to Hogan, man, that was a couple, dude, I remember I saw this white boy just getting, just like a movie, like fucking, uh, what's that goddamn American History X when he's in the bathroom, he's like, you gotta stick up for yourself, I seen that shit, motherfuckers getting punked out, all types of shit, um, like, you gotta, you gotta stand up for yourself, you have to, you gotta be a savage, but, uh, once I, once I got the confidence in myself, I just stopped feeling the need to um, put on and, and just be all, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, don't, I don't give a fuck about that shit. I don't. The only thing I care about, man, is if, you know, if I could wake up and live the life that I really want to live. That's what I care about, man. Like, all the other shit, um, you look at these people, man, and... Um, 
all these people that are doing these attention grabs, especially men. See, listen, listen. Unless you're like a zesty type of dude and you're doing like these weird, like, I don't fucking know how, like some modeling shit or whatever it is. A lot of times when dudes be going in that clout direction, trying to put on or or do too much or whatever it is, all that shit is doing is just making making that that road to prison that much short shorter but like or just jail like period like because when motherfucking like do especially dudes from the street and um if you're new to this podcast i'm always gonna bring it back over there because i feel like i've grown up from that mentality where i understand it and and a lot of my people are still in that shit but i've kind of made it to where i'm i'm I, well i'd like to think i've matured out of it but I always got a heart for it, you know, and it's what I, it's what I relate to. But um, I feel like a lot of times for men, they got to do something extravagant. But usually that shit is stupid. Get on the fucking internet with a gun, or you know, show a bunch of money, or show a bunch of jewelry. If the cops ain't gonna get you, like them jack boys will, you know, like you're just making it fucking easy as hell you remember before instagram like how you would have to get the drop like how blindsided you or not blindsided how blind you'd have to go in man back in the day when we was uh um, breaking into houses and shit you'd have to take a motherfucker word for it or or you'd have to hear like man we was over there at a house party and a bitch went to use the bathroom and she was in the master bedroom and she's like you'd have to take somebody's word for it break into the fucking house in the dark nowadays instagram will pretty much do that for you you would see the layout of the crib, like all types of shit, you know. But like I said, if a dude, a, if a dude is gonna try to flex and all, all that shit, usually, usually backfires in some way. And I've just never felt the need to do it. Um, but yeah. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> back to the Maddie podcast. I just feel like as far as. <sighs> Yeah, some of that yeah, some of that shit bothers me. Um, I'll say this. I'll say this. This is nothing against um any either one of those dudes that did the podcast. I feel like the clout factor that they have to incorporate with these podcasts is just I just it's hard for me to get behind it. I understand it. I get it. You do want people to you want as many people to click on the video as possible, but you know, I don't know, man. I I don't know. It's just like the thumbnail, like the <clears throat> I don't know. It's just it's just a little extra for me, and, and to me, it feels unnecessary because it's like, man, you don't gotta do that. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. If it was up to me, I wouldn't do it. You know what I'm saying? I just would not do it. I just feel like it's a lose lose. Maddie's never gonna come on here and really <clears throat> tell everything. Um, so, you know, you read like the comments, like, here's the one thing I'll say about, um, Blood on the Razor or Chad's, uh, podcast is the comment section. I was glad to see that there was respect and that's because they respect the host. They respect Chad, that other mother, (laughs) that other dude, um, fuck, I don't know his name. Uh, the connect guy, they don't give a fuck about that guy, man. They was going crazy in those comments and, um. Reading them is hard, man. Like reading them comments, like like people talking about his mom and shit like that. Like y'all have no idea. <laughs> you you have no idea. They were talking about um um. See, I don't even like breaking this down, but he already did. He already talked about it, so it is what it is. But they were talking about like, oh yeah, his mom was friendly with the prisoners, right? Like, uh, <laughs> trust me when I say this. And well, there wasn't none of that going on. This wasn't no like keep me company type shit at all. I can vouch. His mom was a gangster <laughs> for sure. There was none of that. She wasn't riding somebody else's coattails and shit. Nothing like that. Um, his story is crazy, y'all. It is. I'm not gonna be the one to spill it. Uh, but it is. In in my opinion, as another white boy, I feel like he handled. Every situation perfect, you know, even when it went left. I feel like he he handled that like a gangster. He did what he had to do. 
in every situation. And I still, and I still, we disagree on a lot of shit. We do. Um, but I still, I'm still finna back it. I'm gonna tell you that. I'm back in the play regardless. But um, there's just different ways of doing things. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like, I feel like when, uh, what it comes down to with Maddie is his story is hard for the outsider to understand it. And here's what y'all got to know is Maddie actually loves rap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He does. He, he, he loves music. And you also got to know when, when you spend 16 years incarcerated, uh, most of your childhood and all that shit, um, it has an effect on you, man. He's not going to come out and be like all of us that were outside all the, the whole time. It's different, man. So when people look at it, I feel like they judge it so premature. And that fucking bothers the shit out of me, man. It's like, I think I said this before. I'm one of those people that you could talk shit about me. I get it all the time. I hate when motherfucking people talk about people I love. That bothers me way more. Like, talk about me all all, all day. But, um... But yeah, I feel like I feel like Maddie is doing this for the music. And people might think like, "Oh, he's he's not one of these dudes that's out there like, I just want to get my 15 minutes of fame and share my story." Trust me when I say this, he's not that at all. I think he's disappointed because Maddie raps real life. As you guys know, I do too. But I also do a lot of um, high energy shit. I do more rapper shit, you know. And that might be because I, you know, I grew up around a lot of black people and shit. And they just got rhythmic shit, and you know, maybe. But Maddie's gonna rap some real shit. You know what I'm saying? He finna give you some re- almost to the point where some shit I don't even know. And I'm his cousin. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we did spend time apart, a lot of time apart. But. Sometimes I'm like, hey, man, I got to ask him and then he's got to break it down to me. But I'm from Northern California. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm a white boy. You know, I'm one of the ones and I get it. Kind of. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's certain things that I don't. I don't. You know what I'm saying? And also you got to keep in mind. Yeah, I got a lot of family in Cocoa County and shit like that, but I'm from Vallejo. You know, like we're a little different. Some things that they do, I won't fully understand. You know, but I don't act like that. I'm not like, <laughs> um, yeah. So, so he wants people to better understand his story, and so that's that's really why he's doing these podcasts. But I mean, it's a tough look. Look, them motherfucking podcasters are gonna be like, "Hey, yo, what's up with these people and these people and these people?" Because those people. If you know who I'm referring to, are the top of the top of the top. And in the last 10, 15 years, I feel like they've been fighting a Rico every year. (laughs) I feel like those guys, they're going after him because they believe what uh, the government believes, whatever they believe. And they believe they got enough evidence to go after him and hit him with Rico's left and fucking right. And, um, you know, that the government's going to do what the government's going to do. But those podcasters are going to try to exploit that because that is a big name. And if there's any ties to it, and let's just be real. Let's just be all the way real. There's not too many white boys that even want to play in that, on that side of things, you know. And I t- I'll tell any white boy, if there's any white boy listening to this, you don't want to play on that side. That's a, don't get it fucked up. You know, we are on YouTube and it's ha 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 and he 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 and those things are not to be fucked around with. Them things are serious, serious things. This shit is real life shit. And when you're in Northern California, you're in the backyard of it all. So if, it, it, you know, it's it, you don't want to be known by these people sometimes. You know, you, you'll have these fanboys of these... um. You have these fanboys of these groups of people, you know, like even legit ones. You have people, biker clubs and stuff like that. And you could tell they're not cut from that. And it's like, bro, what are you doing? You're probably going to get yourself hurt playing over there. You don't know how to play it. You just want it, but you don't know what comes with it, you know. So why don't you just chill, bro? Like you want it too bad. And, And some of those dudes 
they get what they end up thinking they want. And trust me, in the end, it's not what they wanted. And um, yeah, so I could tell you, I, I could tell you like this to simplify. If you know, if there are people that are listening to this and they want to know a little bit more or or have my perspective about Maddie's upbringing, um, plain and simple, man. Uh, his father was a gangster. Did time in the seventies. This is when a lot of those prison gangs were first really ramping up. He did time with some of the the heavy hitters. They weren't heavy hitters in the seventies, though. This is when they were making their bones. And um, his his dad was a savage. His dad was, yeah, his dad was definitely cut from that. Um. Came up with a lot of fucking savages, man, and remained friends with them afterwards. And obviously, he's married to you know Maddie's mother and shit. And he kind of put her onto some game. He was a drug dealer, and that's the environment, right there. It's he got their respect, they got his respect, and um, that's how it went. Maddie didn't really stand a chance. You know what I'm saying? The way that I was raised, completely different completely did yeah maddie did not stand a chance um but also like the mother like maddie's mom went through a lot of trauma too like there's a lot that goes into this and i i I don't even think you can cover it in a whole fucking podcast i'm here to tell you i'm here to tell you man like their family has been through a lot (laughs) a lot like this whole family, like this whole shit, like think we got a lot of characters in our family. Like we got a lot. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, they would have to do a fucking show on all of us. I mean, look, just me and Maddie alone, and there's others. There's a lot. There's a lot more. There's uncles, all types of shit. They got their own spinoff, doing crazy shit. But that's what happens, man. When you grow up, you get influenced by some of the other people doing shit, and you're like, hey, I'm gonna do this shit too. You know what I'm saying? And that's pretty much what fucking happened. Um, yeah. So <laughs> I don't know if <laughs> I don't know if I made any fucking, you know, sense with that. But um Yeah, yeah. It, like I said, it, it I would I would prefer not to talk about it just because I can't talk freely about it. Or not, or I refuse it. I could talk freely. You know what I'm saying? I can do whatever the fuck I want. Nobody's over here telling me what to do or or what I should and shouldn't do. I just choose not to. You know, but I fucking feel for him because it's like, like I said, I'm his fucking cousin. And sometimes I'll hear his raps and I'll be like, man, what do you, like, break that down to me. Then I'll be like, oh, but I'm saying, oh, with all the information that I know. You know? But um, anyway, there's that. These podcasters, man, they're going to do what they got to fucking do. Uh, And I don't think they really care too much about any repercussions of whatever. I'm not complaining either. This isn't like, you know, poor me or anything like that. I'm just, I'm trying to, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just chopping it up. You know what I'm saying? Um, Anyway, somebody also asked me to watch Changing the Subject here. Uh, if you guys want to know anything, like as far as like like I said, my perspective, or the, the Matty Boy questions, or anything that's pertaining to that, I'll do my best, you know. But the real motherfuckers has been here from the beginning. You guys just know by now, like I'm. That's just that's just not my thing. You know what I'm saying? It's just not my thing. And people on Instagram, YouTube, they push you. They try to provoke you to the edge, but I. I'm really from this shit, y'all. I'm really from this shit. Like, you're not finna push. I've been in the streets when, like, you do shit in the streets, motherfuckers will still talk shit about you. If you think that you're moving out there and you're like, yo, at the end of this, they're gonna respect me. No, the fuck they won't. No, they won't. No, they won't. (laughs) Like, that shit is never coming. So you just being this extra out, you know, super gangster and just doing all this shit, thinking that you're going to get that respect, you won't. Do it for the money. At least that will be there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, uh, man, I could care less. I used to. I used to care. I used to give a fuck what people think. I care what my boys think. I'm not like some fucking 
heartless dude. But nah, like that's just not my thing, yo. And a lot of people will, uh, oh, you never, you know, did this or you ain't really with the shit and all that. I'm not. This is the internet. I'm not. You know what I'm saying? Like I said before, man, if they ever played these podcasts in court, maybe the jury would get a good laugh. You know what I'm saying? When they play y'all podcasts in court, you're going to get a life fucking sentence and bring the house down. You know what I'm saying? Talking about them them fake ass war stories and shit. Motherfuckers is doing time for some bull. You know what I'm saying? Back in the day when I was running with the fucking blah, blah, blah. Yeah, play that shit in court. You know you squealing and shit. I see I don't have to worry about that. That's why it it's a better life, y'all. It's a better life when you just say, you know what? That's not the time or the place for that. Um, when I get off of here, I can I can live my life in peace. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You see me in a different environment, it might be different, but this is not where 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 we're going to do that at. Anyway, somebody had told me to um, watch American Nightmare on Netflix. Thank you. Who, who was that? Fuck. Jacqueline? J- Jack- Jacqueline. My, why, does that, why does that sound like a weird-ass name right now? I think it's time to light this up, man. This podcast needs to <clears throat> be a little bit more <laughs> horrible. <laughs> That's what we need right now. Does anybody smoke to this podcast? I know we only got like, what, five uh, five episodes? I feel like this is like a fucking... I feel like this episode needs to be on like Patreon or some shit. Like, it's a super calm, calm episode. You know, somebody told me that they go to sleep to my podcast. Uh, they literally just told me that yesterday. And I'm like, dude, How? <laughs> I'm like going crazy half of the fucking time. Well, this will be the podcast to do it to. <sighs> anyway, um, yeah. So American Nightmare on Netflix. I had no idea. <clears throat> Here we go. I had no idea that that it was a um uh whole story about uh, a Vallejo kidnapping and it was fucking crazy so shout out I mean I think it's Jacqueline um shout out to you for that like I haven't sat down and watched a fucking show or movie for two or I don't know how long it was two hours in a long time and I actually enjoyed it because I didn't know it was I had no idea the person asked me they were like hey can you give your opinion on uh American Nightmare and I'm like never fucking she was like really did you hear about it though and I'm like no not at all I think I'm thinking she's talking she's like oh I I, I thought you would she's like I thought you would because it uh because you're from there or whatever and I didn't know what she was referring to man that shit was in Vallejo California I seen hella motherfuckers I know you know what I'm saying? Like, I've seen hella people, not the people in it. I didn't know them at all, but I knew, I knew the, um, I obviously knew uh, Dan Russo. It was all the usual suspects in there, man. Dan Russo is one of the fucking dopest lawyers in the whole Bay Area. He's represented a few of my friends on, on, on some big cases. Um, his whole team, his whole team represented when fucking eight of my homies went down, his whole team backed that. And Amy was on there too. Amy Morton. Um, yeah, nah, them motherfuckers don't play. Them attorneys is is yeah. Nah, yeah, we don't play when it comes to attorneys, man. Shit. <sighs> nah, I fuck with Russo. I fuck with Russo. I've hauled at him a few times. Um who else is on there? Oh, uh the cop. Um was it Mike Mustard? I I got busted by Mustard when he first started to become a cop way back in the day. Way back in the day. He was actually a cool, I don't know what happened because he was actually a dick in that fucking uh in that documentary. If you guys haven't watched it, you should, but I'm I'm gonna spoil some shit for you. That fucking documentary was crazy, yo. I remember hearing about that shit, and I do feel bad for the girl. So let me try to. Let me try to break this down. Um, so there's a couple. 
like uh, I'm guessing like 25, 26 or something like that, right? And somebody breaks into their house. Somebody breaks into the house with a gun, <clears throat> gun with a laser on it, kidnaps the girl, and um, gives the dude like some fucking, um, gives him some NyQuil and something else, something else to put him out. He was like, yo, drink this shit. He's got a gun, so the, the motherfucker's going to do whatever he asks, right? So um so they kidnapped the girl. Like just in, just randomly, middle of the night, laser gun, and he says his name. He's like, Aaron, lay on lay face down on the bed. And then he was like, take this shit. This motherfucker, I don't know how he did this shit. The kidnapper set a goddamn webcam up in the corner. Set up, yeah, set up a webcam and was like, hey, I'm going to be watching you. If you call 911, the bitch is dead. So um, he ends up passing out. Even that right there, I was like, bro, I, I, I don't know, man. Like NyQuil or no NyQuil, if I just got my house broken into and my bitch stolen, um, I think it would take a little bit more. I but, but I don't know what that other shit he did. It, it was like a cocktail, but passing out right after, even if you are drugged up, is pretty fucking crazy. So he wakes up six hours later. He's pacing around. Like, can you imagine waking up from that, being like, "Dude, is this a fucking dream? What the fuck is this?" Calls the cops. The cops start inter- uh, interrogating him, asking questions. His story was so crazy. <laughs> His story was like, yeah, people broke in and uh, made me drink NyQuil and this and, you know, took her and set a webcam up and all this crazy shit. But the cop is like, dude, you called six hours later and he they took the bed she- sheets. And he was like, where are the bed sheets? And he was like, oh, fucking hey, I was passed the fuck out. Um... And so they're like, this is just sounding crazy. So the cop that I know, Mike Mustard, uh, he was interrogating. He was interrogating her. Man, he used to actually be one of the cool cops. But in there, <laughs> in there, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, he was a fucking dick. But, but I'm not going to lie. Dude's story did sound super suspect. So he's pressing him. He's like, yo, where is she? We know you did something. Where is she? Um, and he's like, man, fucking a dude. Like, I don't fucking know. Then he asked for his lawyer. They get all fucking mad. And his lawyer is Dan Russo. So he's in good hands. Uh, they think that she's dead. She ends up sending a message and it's like, Hey, I'm alive. But she sounds super ca- casual. It's like, Hey, I think her name was like Denise or something. It's like, Hey, this is Denise kidnapped. But I'm fine. It's like that. So they're like, dude, what the fuck is going on, man? So then they start thinking it's the other girl um, that she did it. And the dude is the victim. And and so so anyway, he kind of plays a game with them. He sends like the 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 kidnapper. So there is a real kidnapper. And um hold on, do you want to know what I just if anybody watched this shit, wasn't there wasn't there two people who kidnapped her in the beginning? Yeah, that, I might have to go back to that. Anyway, um yeah, so so he's got the girl. The girl is somewhere Southern California, some a long way away from Vallejo, and they're sending messages to like the Times Herald. So the Times Herald guy, the the newspaper guy's taking it to the fucking police. Like, hey, listen, I got this message. She is alive, and so they start trying to start trying to like find this girl. She's getting treated like shit. The dude, the dude that's with her, you, you know, we're not getting too much information about him, but he's he's definitely a fucking weirdo. Um, and he decides, you know what? Fuck this shit. I'm gonna drop her back off. Drives all the way back. She, 
This really didn't happen in Vallejo. It happened in Mare Island. Mare Island is a creepy fucking little neighborhood that's off of, um, right outside of Vallejo, but it's, it's across like a swampy kind of river. And it used to be an old Navy base, you know, way back in the day. It was always a creepy thing. Like Mare Island was always kind of a weird place for people who grew up in Vallejo. It was like, um, there's a lot of ghost stories. It's, everything is abandoned. Everything is. It's, it, it, it's literally set up for a fucking horror film. Um, so anyway, he goes to Mare Island, drops her off. Oh, by the way, he said it wasn't even intended for her. He really wanted the, the dude, Aaron, the boyfriend who got left, got his girl took. He wanted his ex-girl. He was like, this wasn't for you. Weird, man. Fucking weird. So now she's back home. And people think that she fucking did it because she's not talking to any cops and she lawyers up. So they think like, oh, it's a hoax. And that's what I remember is I did hear about that. Like I did hear about like a girl faked her kidnapping and all this stuff in Vallejo. And because it was in Mare Island, nobody really gave a fuck, you know, just to be really real. Uh, yeah, like it, it, was, it was definitely a weird thing. But man, Vallejo is such a crazy city. That um, it didn't really pop like that. So when I was watching this documentary, I was like, "Damn, like this shit was actually this shit was actually really fucking crazy." It was it was a good documentary. It's a good watch. So here's another thing. Then there's something in Dublin. I used to live in Dublin. You know what I'm saying? Like fucking uh, a, a, a neighborhood in Dublin, California. Um, some guy breaks into a house, tries to kidnap a young girl. The dad fights him off. The police come. He's all bloody. And he ran in the backyard somewhere and now they can't find him. And so now he's on the the loose again. Um, I'm not going to tell. I'll, I'll leave this out. I'll leave this part out. It's a big part. Um, they end up getting this dude. They they end up getting them. Um, and fuck, it was weird, man. Fuck, it was weird. Like, yeah, I'll let I'll leave all that for everybody else. I'll leave all that. But um, trust me, there's a lot more. I did not ruin it like that. You'll still be entertained. Um, dude was a fucking creep, man. Fucking creep. Uh, must have been like stalking her house out, knew him, knew the ex-girlfriend and like must have just been, uh, and he didn't seem, and here's, here's the other thing. This is going to spoil a little bit, but the fucking guns were fake. The balls this dude had, the fucking balls. He was definitely a creep, but it's like, bro, you... You, he had to have staked it out. You know what I'm saying? Because you obviously knew there was no dogs. So that's the first thing you getting. My California house is you getting dogs. You know what I'm saying? Like, they finna be on yo ass, boy. Like, listen, I had a love-hate relationship. My dog, Vito, was like a true alpha male dog. Even the fucking dog. We, like, we tried to get him trained, and they were like, hey, yo, this is actually like a really rare dog personality. I guess like, like, so like the wolf packs and shit like that, right? The, the alpha is usually a bigger, bigger dog and he's very serious and he's very observant, like very dominant, very dominant. That was my dog Vito, right? This motherfucker would surveillance the whole house. I swear to God, like sometimes he'd be laying on it. He would lay on the edge of the bed. He never cuddled with me either. Like this motherfucker was never loving, never none of that shit. He was just, bro, he was just waiting for some shit to kick off. This motherfucker would wish somebody would come into my house. Dude, I swear to God. Sometimes he'd be on the edge of the bed and I'd be like, hey, buddy, come over here. I'd try to like reach for him. He'd just like slide off the bed. He'd be like, no, 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 hold on, man. Hold on. I'm on the clock right now, bro. And uh, sometimes he would just, in the middle of the night, I just knew two or three times, <laughs> this dude would do his laps. There was a dog. I, I, have, I had cameras everywhere in my Dublin uh, house. Dude, that thing was like Fort Knox. Real shit. Cameras everywhere. Um, 
fucking, I could see him going in the backyard and he would literally check the side gate. This motherfucker, if you was, if you was plotting, so was he. <laughs> so was he. Y'all was going to meet one day. Real shit. Like it, I've ne- I've owned several dogs. Never, never, yo, like this fucking dog was different, yo. So you coming into my house, bro, especially with that motherfucker. Oh, dude, sometimes people would fucking knock on the door, right? This dude had a different bark. Like he would literally like get his breath like, <gasps> like he like he was excited. And then sometimes I'm sure not the only one to have this type of dog. This motherfucker would just look out the window, like just look out the window and it made you feel like he was a friendly dog nah (laughs) nah listen when he was a puppy he didn't even play with toys (laughs) i swear to god everybody that remembers Vito will, will fucking vouch this motherfucker would literally sit down and look at you just as a puppy the the calmest dog ever in life but if another dog came in there man and they didn't like fully submit he 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 taking them out <laughs> for sure 100 percent, he taking them out anyway back to the creep this dude knew that there wasn't no dogs but he also knew that they didn't have a gun like bro you walking in there with a toy gun and you're going to kidnap a female like you're literally going to take her out of the fu- like man it really it really, yo, honestly, like, I don't care how fucking soft we get. We can never, we can never get soft or, or soft ain't the fucking word, but we need to always remember there are people like that out there. It's so hard to relate because they're so fucking weird. Like these dudes are, those dudes, the motherfuckers that go to jail and get got. Yeah. And he was white too. Them white boys love, ain't nothing make the white boys happier than them motherfuckers hitting the yard. I swear to God, they finna roll his head down the fucking tear. <laughs> Real shit. Them Southsiders and them white boys, man. Oh my God. They, that, no, yeah. He definitely made a few people's day. I'm sure they better put that boy away. But these dudes are fucking creepy, man. I think the second girl he was trying to get was an underage like a lot younger, a lot younger. It's fucking weird, man. But um, but no, I seen a lot of even that cruise. Uh, the female cop. When I was young, coming up, she first started. Uh, her and mustard. Um, see, mustard is a detective now. Back when he was when I knew him when he, or I didn't know him like that. I was getting in trouble. He was hella cool though. One time I fucking uh like I first met him when I was like twelve. I was a skateboarder. I was just skateboarding like late night at a school. And um, somebody called the cops and he showed up. And I remember me and my brother were like, fuck, man, what the fuck are we going to do? It's going to wake our parents up. We're fucked. And then uh, he pulled right up to the house. He said, hey, listen, this is what we're going to do. He said, I'm going to make you a deal. He goes, no more sneaking out. He goes, but can you sneak back in? He goes, man, I'm not going to even tell your parents. Then I seen him a couple other times, and he was cool. You got to understand, there are not too many cool Vallejo cops, especially back then. Um, Vallejo cops are different. I tell everybody this, and they be like, yeah, fuck the police. And I'm like, listen to me when I tell you this. I, I don't know where you're from, so you might have a crazy police department, but I can almost guarantee you Vallejo was worse. They were just, they was on a different time. They literally had gangs inside, like kind of like LA has. They had like a goon squad gang. And um, fucking Vice did a documentary. I think it's called like the world's deadliest police department, Vallejo, California. I knew that they were fucking different too. Like they would move. See, here's the thing is Vallejo's a small city. You know, so shit gets personal real quick. When you grow up there, you you know all the cops. You know what I'm saying? Especially, you know, from the 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 gang task. They'll they'll get you, they'll get you in middle school. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times, like they'll fucking like they'll know you from young. And um Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of those cops, man, were just fucking, it would get personal, like real personal. So, dude, let, let me just explain this. So they 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 killed they killed a lot of people. Their murder rate was the top for all the police so they i mean we i I think everybody in vallejo this this is how crazy it is 
I'm going to say this because I really believe this to be true. I think everybody who grew up in Vallejo knows somebody and was close to somebody who the police killed. You know what I'm saying? Right, wrong, or other. Like, you know, that's just that's just the way it is. Um, in high school, too, I think the first one that me personally in high school. So, yeah, man. Listen, I was at a um, I was at a party at Dan Foley. Fight breaks out. Everybody starts fighting, and uh. I believe, I believe this is like in their defense because I, I think this did happen, but I think somebody started shooting, but not, not, not any crazy shootout type shit. It, it, from what I remember, it was mostly fighting. But when I, when I heard the report and shit like that, they said like shots were fired. And I'm not saying that there weren't shots fired. I'm not. I can't say that with all confidence. So let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Shots were fired. Listen to me when I say this. The fucking VPD rolled up. This is a true story, yo. Rolled up. Didn't even get out of the car before they started shooting. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Let me say that again. VPD rolled up to Dan Foley while there was a fight going on. And because they said shots were fired... They rolled the window down and started firing out of their car without getting out. I'm not talking about like opening a door and being behind. No. (laughs) Like that. That's how VPD was moved. I I promise you, I swear to God. I swear to God. Ask anybody who grew up. If you grew up from 2004 all the way to 2012, like around that time, they were, they was moving crazy, crazy, ma'am. And like, dude, like there were ones like two, like would try to be on the cool side of you and shit, but, um, that never worked out. Um, but there were, there were cool ones though. Like there were ones just doing a job, you know, uh, officer bull was one of them. Um, <laughs> it was another one. I, I remember <laughs> officer bull had a fucking, uh, who the fuck was his little protege? Not Officer Bull, don't claim him. He claims to be Officer Bull's pro- Officer McCray. Officer McCray. <laughs> yeah, that dude was the worst. Yeah, nah, I don't know if he was the worst, but that dude was trash. That dude, that dude tried to be all buddy, buddy. <laughs> he said, hold on a second. Dude, this dude was dirt since high school, man. Um, who was that dude? Uh, Jordan, Jordan, if you're watching this, didn't that motherfucker, what happened with him at the fucking, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, two different things are hitting my brain. One where he's trying to make a deal. <laughs> like he wanted us to like give into, like to rat. Hold on. Hold on. We were cutting class. We were cutting class. We were drinking. I got it. We were drinking one street away from the high school, but they hired like gang task at our high school. So there was like Officer Hernandez. You remember that motherfucker? <laughs> um, who was the bitch? Who was the bitch? Did he have a uh did he have a wife? The girl was even worse. Um man, like I said, Vallejo police was crazy. Um and I'm talking about it like this now, but I promise you, man, like it wasn't, it was no laughing matter. <laughs> this shit was real. Um, fucking night. Yeah, we was cutting class. We got the street, down the street. He pulled up. We was drinking and the keys were in the ignition. And then he tried to flex a DUI on us. He was like, yep, you guys are going to jail and you're getting a DUI. You're going to be expelled. Life is over. And, and then we're sitting there, me and Jordan about to take it. We're like, man, whatever. Um, then he's like, or (laughs) this dude was trash. This dude was trash. He was like, or we can work something out. Cause, cause they had no intel about the gangs at our high school. Like our high school was crazy during, during this time. Like the gangs was getting out of hand. The gangs definitely was getting out of hand, but you know what called, what caused it? That fucking, uh, that fucking uh, black versus Mexican riot where the fucking, the little Mexican uh, got airlifted. 
that after that they didn't play about that shit. Yeah, we could talk about that. We could talk about that another day because I think I know the person who caused that shit. I think I know the person who set that motherfucker off. I swear to God. <laughs> I swear to God. Oh shit. Yeah, don't yeah, don't get me down. Don't get me down that road. Um anyway, he was like, let's work something out, man. You know, like you can let me know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Tip me off. He was like, and you know, <laughs> that's what it is. And the motherfucker ripped it up without us agreeing to it. What an idiot. What a, I think he was pump faking anyway. I think he was pump faking anyway, but like uh, if he wasn't, he's such an idiot because this dude rips up the agreement. And he was like, you know what I'm talking about? I'm like, this dude's been watching way too many movies right now, bro. <laughs> so me and Jordan were like, all right, shit, well, we'll let you know. Bro, we was, oh, nah, it's all coming back to me. Because I was young. It's high school. We were throwing them off. Bro, we was throwing them off. We would know that it would go like if we were going to fight in the alley. Alley, like right behind the uh, Springs Road, we'd be like, Yeah, it's about to go down at the uh, corner of Georgia. <laughs> and he'd be like, We got a tip. We got a tip that's going down to Georgia. <laughs> All this like that. And then the fights would be over there. And like, I think by the second or third one, he knew. And I was like, The gig was up. Like, <laughs> me and Jordan walked. In. He hated us. We walked to class or whatever it was. Like, he had this look. Oh, oh my God. Oh my. Fuck the school. Two years later. Two years later, um, I get pulled over. I got pulled over with like the smallest amount of weed, right? This motherfucker would hear it. Do y'all remember this shit? Um, I know for a fact, like Chino, Jordan, some of the, <laughs> like Abe, Al, Ray, and Ron, they definitely like cops would fucking, uh, cops would hear the name on the fucking walkie talkie and certain cops that had, I told you it got personal, man. It got personal. Certain cops that had like a vendetta against somebody would show up intentionally. I got fucking busted. Uh, they pulled over the car and just wanted to search the car. And, um, McCray came flying out of his shit. He's like, I got this. He was, he tried to be hella fucking them cops though. Let me tell you, like I said, we laughing about it right now. They hella rough. They throwing you on the ground, sm- slamming your head on the hood, all types of shit, man. Like, they was not playing, and he was doing that shit. And I know, I was like, that shit stemmed from that motherfucking fake-ass DUI deal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that motherfucker hated us. Oh, man. Nah, but yeah, like I said, them fucking cops, man. Dude, I, yeah, I'm just running through these stories in my head. Like, all the times these cops have been wilding the fuck out. Oh, shit. Dude, I got hemmed up in a Fairfield one time, right? <laughs> so we were at a, uh, we used to go to weird things, um, like a bowling alley. This is back, uh, this is back high school too. And um, I think we were at a bowling alley or something. It's like Vacaville or Fairfield or something like that, right? There was a, f- <clears throat> there was a fight that kicked out and then it turned into a shooting and then um, they arrested a few people. Well, I was one of the ones that got detained, right? Because I was fighting, so there's a crime so they could detain you. And they took like six people or whatever is back to the station. And I can hear it. And I knew I, like, I wasn't going to say anything. My dad, my grandfather instilled that. Like, I didn't say shit. Like, whatever I could hear in the next room, them motherfuckers were like, man, why am I in here, man? Like, I didn't even fucking do nothing. Man, I didn't even touch that shit. I need to get home. Like, they saying hella shit. Like, they like, it's only a matter of time for that. Like, man, this shit, Deontay did that shit, man. But anyway, all they wanted to know is um, who I came with and what car I drove and all the shit like that. Because I think they had like, I don't know, maybe the description of the shooter or something like that. I didn't say a fucking thing, but... The Fairfield police were hella nice. <laughs> like, hella fucking nice. I was like, this is going to be crazy. Because I had PTSD from the goddamn VPD. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they were hella nice. They didn't, they, dude, they were hella cool. Like, when I was asking, like, I, I literally asked. I'm like, man, am I detained? They were like, for now, you are detained. I was like, man, do I need a lawyer? They were like, that's up to you. I'm like, okay. Then they left me alone, and I guess somebody ended up finally telling them. They're like, yo, you can go. I'm like, oh, cool. Man, they, they were hella nice, though. They're like, yo, you need water, all this type of shit. VPD would have beat me up before I got in there. They'd be like, hey, cut the camera real quick. I swear to God, watch that documentary. Uh, like I said, everybody else be like, fuck the police, fuck the police. No. 
when a motherfucker from Vallejo say fuck the police, that shit come from somewhere. <laughs> that shit come from somewhere. Did, hold on a second. Puka, did you get shot by VPD? Or was that somebody else? Man, my boy got shot. In, I think got shot in his ass. <laughs> I think he got shot in his ass. Or his leg or something like that. I think that was VPD too. It might have been Richmond, but I think that was VPD too, man. And, man, I got a couple of homies that got... Yeah, man, I could do a whole... If you guys want a real podcast on VPD, let me sit down and actually think about these fucking stories and shit. But, oh my goodness, man. Um, Nah, they knew us, man. They knew us personally, all of us. We were like the usual suspects. Like, um, yeah, I remember when I got pulled over, they gave me the name, Money Man Mace. When they found like three, uh, they found a good little wad of cash or whatever it is. And I didn't even know it was from Money Man Mitch. At the time, I didn't even see paid in full. I was young. And um, <laughs> God was like, Money Man Mace, huh? I just took that shit. I was like, nah, I'm taking that for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, like I said, it's good to look back at it in hindsight. But, man, I always felt like ill, man, like like a knot in my stomach every time they pulled up. Because of that goddamn damn Foley fucking shit. I'm like, are they going to get out the car? Or are they just going to start shooting from the car? Like, what's going to happen with these motherfuckers, man? Oh, man, goodness. Um, Yeah, no, nah, fucking A. Uh, <clears throat> I think they did give me PTSD. Now I think about it, because even when I had the Dublin... Oh, the Dublin police is crazy, too, though. They man, like they have there's no real crime though, so they're crazy for like no reason. But they have like a no tolerance rule on the crime. Y'all wanna hear a crazy story about that? Um let me see, how old was I? Um 26, something like that. 26 or 27. I'm uh I'm with two females, and I decided, we decided, like, this is we never go out in Dublin. There's nothing to do. Where, where are you going to go? Buffalo Wild Wings? <laughs> it's exactly where we went. <laughs> but uh, So we decided to go out uh, to Dublin. And um, go to Buffalo Wild Wings. It's dead. Uh, we ended up getting one drink. Didn't even order food. Leave. Went to another bar. I was like, yo, let's just fucking see these bars then. Like, let's just see them. Because usually when, whenever we wanted to do something, we went to San Francisco. Or, or we just went to Vallejo and did some, like, hood shit. But um, anyway, so we go to another one. I think it was called, like, Pick Six or something like that. That motherfucker's dead. We have one drink there. We go to a... Uh, fuck, what was this one called? Some dive bar. Oh, it's called Evie's. I don't think it's Evie's now, though. Uh... Yeah, went there, real dead. It was like super dive bar shit. Then, so this is our fourth bar, man. <clears throat> then we go to um, Gallagher's. It's like an Irish pub, but it's it's just a bar, man. <laughs> it's just a bar. So anyway, we're in there, and um, this dude comes out of nowhere. Uh, this fucking dude like starts acting drunk. There's like a smoking section. There's like an outdoor. When you walk right in. To the right, you can go outside and there's a smoking area. He came from that area and then was like, hey, hey, bro. And he kept like trying to get me and the girl's attention. He's like, yo, do you know where we can get like, or where I can get any like Coke? Like, do you have Coke? Whatever. Dude, the girl I was with just put him on blast. She was like, oh, he needs a chaser. He wants some Coke. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, and he was like, no. No, 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 no. Not that kind of guy. I swear to God, he's hella fucking weird, right? Um, he was like, I need some coke, bro. Like, I'm like, dude, this can't even be real. I'm just, I'm just I, I told him, I was like, yo, I can't help you, bro. Um, so he kind of like lingers around like a fucking gnat. Uh, then out of nowhere, some other guy comes up and he 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 literally like grabs my shoulder like a little bit, like a light tap, taller dude, kind of older dude. He's like, yo, is this guy bothering you? Is this guy bothering you? He's like, yo, look, look, man, give these people a drink <clears throat> and buys us a drink, right? Right now, I'm, I'm, man, my senses are fucking heightened. 
he ends up asking me, he's like, what part of Ireland is your family from? Right when he did that shit, I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, how the fuck would you know I'm even of that? Like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm already on edge and I'm like, mm, not feeling this. So I start giving small talk. I tell the girls, I'm like, hey, look, we're going to have one, one drink. We're going to go over in that corner and we're just going to stay over there. Fuck this bar. It's fucking weird. But I, I usually don't let the girls know, like, I'm on edge right now. I'm just still feeling it out. End up having a drink fucking five minutes later. I'm like, you know, hey, look, let's try to walk out. I'm like, let's go walk out. As soon as we fucking walk out, man cops boom hey everybody there was like people outside that were smoking people outside lingering it's like hey everybody against the wall over here he's like you two you two right here he didn't know the other girl was with me so the other girl just got off um anyway you two over here stay still whatever i'm like what the fuck literally give the girl i'm I'm like you ain't got nothing in the car right because we did we weren't even doing anything you know what i'm saying like we weren't doing nothing but but i was afraid they were gonna find like some weed and tear it up um, at this time I had like a fucking, I had like a small Benz. I'm like, go ahead and do whatever you want to do. Like, it's not that, it's not that big of a fucking car. Oh, I take it back. Nope. I had the Cadillac. They could have tore that car up though. Have fun. Um, yeah. So they got me and they're like, they're like not saying shit to me. They're like, Hey, um, <clears throat> going through the car and shit like that. Right. And I'm thinking, how the fuck did you just able to go through the car? And you're not going to say nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, this just feels like an unlawful stop or whatever the fuck it is, right? Two more, they take my ID out, all that type of shit, and I'm just sitting down waiting. Like I said, they're not saying nothing. Um, I can hear on the fucking, um, their phone thing, uh, he's talking to somebody, and he's reading off my address and shit like that. I'm sitting over, I'm chilling, uh, me and her not even saying nothing. I'm like, man, whatever. Let them do whatever the fuck they want to do. Because there was nothing. Um, and then I fucking hear the address. And I, I, I mean, I think about the address. I'm like, wait. That address is not on my ID. And then I fucking turn over to her. I'm like, they're at the house. <laughs> like, these motherfuckers are hitting the house. Um, and I got a little nervous. Because <laughs> you never know. Maybe they find something laying around or something like that. Um, and they're not finding nothing in the car. And that's what the guy said. He's like, they're, they're talking. I can tell there's like some frustration going on. Everybody's coming outside the bar to watch this shit. Um, two cars pull up, plain clothes, hop out and they're talking, they're talking, they're talking. And I can just tell there's some like weird fucking confusion. Apparently the sheriff comes up to me and goes, you know what you guys were so sorry uh, we're so sorry. We got a call that somebody was in here, you know, selling or whatever the fuck it is. And I'm not saying nothing. I'm not giving them nothing. We're not even like, oh, it was him over there. We're just like, oh, okay, well, you know, we just, you know, we thought it was kind of weird, you know, but whatever you guys had to do, you know, if you did it, you know, we're just going to be on our way, whatever. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, we're sorry. They, they said somebody was in here and it kind of fit your description, you know, whatever, right? I'm just thinking. So right when we got in the fucking car, I'm like, Hey, dude, and I, hey, I left that girl too, cause I was like, I don't know what she got like that. Look, like, we gonna we gonna circle around the block, cause I didn't want to be like, hey, yo, come over here. And the next thing you fucking know, I was <laughs> I just got in the fucking car. I was like, yo, text and we gonna come back. Um, any fucking way, man. This is just me. This could be an honest mistake. I don't know how they would have gotten the other. I mean, maybe there was something laying around in the car. I don't, I don't know. Like I said, don't take this as like the truth. This is just in my fucking head. I think they thought I was out there fucking selling shit because I went to four different bars. I think I got them to do a false start, man. I think I got them to jump. <laughs> I really fucking do. I really do. And check this out. When I got home, I was so fucking paranoid. I was so paranoid, yo. Just for the record, there was certain things in that home um, that I didn't, that, you know, nothing, nothing crazy. Nothing crazy, but you know, there were some things in that home and I was like, man, I think they're going to hit the house, whatever the fuck it was. Cause I heard that address. I definitely wasn't tripping. I heard that address, but, um, I kept fucking dude. I remember, I feel like I'm saying too much now, but like, I don't know if this is entertaining. I hope it is. I remember I was like, fuck. All right, hold on. Let's just drive to the gas station. <laughs> and, yo, and like, 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 listen. 
when you're fucking like that, the girls are like way more like, dude, I swear to God, like I had these girls on like, <laughs> like but I'm tweaking, you know, like not literally, but I'm like, dude, like I'm thinking it's going to happen. I'm like, I can't get this shit out of the house. I need to get this shit out of the house. Right. So I'm like, let's just drive without anything to the gas station. And I was like, and whatever, like, and if they're not following us or whatever the fuck it is, I'll come back and get it. So I fucking driving to the gas station, right? Fucking slow as shit. Rear view, nobody, right? Get to the gas station. I get home. I'm like, okay, all right. I think it's safe now. I'm like, wait, <laughs> wait, what if they allowed us to do that? And now they're going to bust us with it because we just went to a gas station. Like, I, like it never ended, man. I remember like, I want to say I was in that motherfucker for like two days contemplating like how to move. The motherfuckers fucked me up, man. Anyway, um, no, yeah, Dublin police is definitely interesting. They did my boy dirty one time. They caught him in a sting, like a fucking escort sting or whatever it is, and they, like, kicked dirt on him, all types of shit. Oh, man. Yeah, and they were like, this is our town. But um, you know what's funny? Somebody actually, Somebody actually reached out to me and asked me about police i'll probably answer this question um right here hey mace i don't know if this is a podcast topic or not but i wanted to know why it seems you and maddie boy don't really support law enforcement i'm curious to know your thoughts on the defund the police movement kind of late on that one huh um in your song yank something you say you don't have a problem with any cops you just never talk with them there's also other songs i've heard you reference negative feelings towards them but who would you call if intruders were to break in your home or threaten one of your family members lives the lawlessness we see today and this is actually a long i'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this short the lawlessness we see from the youth today is undoubtedly being pushed by the left in pop culture and rap sp- sp- specifically. Um, I'm sorry for being so random, but my thoughts on defund. No, no, no. Even even when I was a criminal, I wouldn't even. The police are doing their job, and as long as they do their job, it's fine. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> when we talk about VPD, they was going above and beyond. You know, but if, yeah, if a cop is doing his job, they're doing his job. You know, but like like out here in NYPD, like they seem to they seem to have so much going on that they seem pretty fucking cool. But they also got to deal with so much bullshit. So when it's time to go, they gonna go. But like I said, Vallejo is a small city, and shit just gets so personal over time that these cops, man, you kind of forget they are. No, nah, you definitely don't forget they're a cop, but. You forget what a cop can and can't do. Like, I'm trying to tell you, man, Vallejo was just different, yo. It was di- Watch that Vice documentary. They was, you know, and that's, I'm, I'm jumping around right now. I'm tired. I'm a little high, and I apologize. But that kid, I don't, I, I don't know his name, but the family, the one that I believe, I believe this is the one, the one that was sleeping, fell asleep, fell asleep in the, um, Taco Bell drive through and then they just lit his fucking shit up because I think he had a pistol on his lap. Um, they sued them and got 2.5. No, I think I got more than that. I'm not sure. I think I'm getting that mixed up with the documentary I just watched, but um, <sighs> that's why I tell people to get out, man. Um, because if you're riding around Vallejo, um, it would probably be the smarter thing to ride with something than without it. But I would always be on the side that if you feel like every time you ride around where you live with a gun, you probably shouldn't be there. You know, that's probably the indicator that you might want to move. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, no, nah, it's, it's Vallejo is like a city that, um, everything is around the corner. It's a very small city. I didn't realize that until I actually moved out and went to other cities and cause Vallejo was all I knew. That was it, <clears throat> man. And, um, 
I think the first time I ever got like a culture shock was when I went right to the next city over. I started hanging out with some people from American Canyon. I was like, this shit feels different. Vallejo is a very interesting fucking city. It's a very real city too. There's a lot of like, and when I say real, it, there's some deep, deep ties in Vallejo. It's a city where you, if you want to be a part of that life, the opportunity is there. Those, you know, those groups and those, <laughs> they're well represented in Vallejo, California. You know, so if you're you're uh, doing your thing, you probably get noticed. And that's not a good thing, you know, unless you want to do life in prison or you want that road for real. But um, I didn't feel I I didn't feel that when I was in American Canyon. Just the next city over, like they had a they had a more relaxed way of living. Like here, I'll put this for example. Like when Mac Dre popped off, right? They caught on to Mac Dre when after he died. And then he became real popular. Yo, to us in Vallejo, Mac Dre had been around. And Mac Dre was, Mac Dre and all his people and E-42, more so, I'm going to keep this shit all the way real. I've never seen E-40 in Vallejo. And where I'm from, my OGs that are 10 years old than me, they've never seen E-40 in Vallejo. So I, and I'm not saying that as like he, he soft for that. I'm just saying, he probably don't want to go. You know what I'm saying? He's probably like, hey, yo, fuck this shit. And I don't blame him. Because it's like a fucking fish tank. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, everything is around the corner. Um, But growing up, there were places where you could not play Mac Dre. You know? Um, <laughs> And people don't, just don't understand that. They're like, what are you talking? Well, now, now, listen, he's he's a fucking Bay Area legend. I'm talking about back in the day. Listen, my neighborhood is one of those neighborhoods. You know, people are like, what? Man, I remember I was, uh, I, I, I forgot, somewhere like San Ramon or some square shit. A lot of people, like, this was when I first moved out there. They were doing, like, the this dance. They were throwing up the T's and throwing up the, the, throwing up the crest. Back where I'm from, that's, nah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, all of that shit belongs to a neighborhood, and there's people who funk with that neighborhood. Um, You just didn't see that, and I remember just thinking, and, sh- and, and they were doing it, like, kind of like in my face, because they thought I was just another square fucking white boy, like, but where I'm from, they'll shoot you for that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can't go in this dance in the Ville. Back in the day, you can't, on my block, you're not this dancing on my block. I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. And when people hear that shit, all this shit is back in the day. I'm, I'm just trying to let people know. It wasn't this kumbaya, I think, but the motherfuckers from uh, American Canyon, Napa, Benicia, they loved all the Vallejo rap. But if you bring that shit to the wrong area, man, man, dude, <laughs> man. I've heard so many crazy stories. I've seen it too. Um, there's a bar right around the corner from my block, Teeters, Coconut Grove, whatever. Man, there would be people like, you know, banging certain music and shit like that. Wrong place. Um, nah, man, like E40 the same way. Like if you were slapping E40 in the crest back in the day, they wouldn't let that shit fly either. They'd probably flock at your whip. Real shit. Imagine that. Like, that's kind of the environment we grew up in. Like, we're from that fucking city. So it took a while for us to be like, okay. Like, because listen, they're real. Like, them motherfuckers, like, hate them or love them. Like, Mac Dre and all them, they was moving. <laughs> they are not rappers like that. They, they're hood motherfuckers, yo. Period. Period. You thinking it's sweet and shit like that? Fuck no. I can't say that about E40 because I never seen E40 around like that. I don't know who who um who his people are, but I Mac Dre's people still out there now. <laughs> still moving around a V. So no, like it wasn't this like soft ass shit. But when I started hanging out with people from American Canyon, the way that they put it, I'm like, damn man, this seems more free and fun. Like I don't know if people know this shit. Like the hyphy movement wasn't 
fun in Vallejo. Like, there was some times where it was fun. Motherfuckers was dying, yo. Dying, like real shit. I know a few people who, you know, um, man, one of the first times I've ever seen somebody shot was on some, like, hyphy movement shit. I'm not going to say who it was and anything like that, but um, it was dancing on top of a car. They just bow. And I know that they was aiming for him because he was kind of high up. So they wanted him. But man, that motherfucker dropped to the ground like a sack of potatoes. Doof. I just remember being like, my goodness, man. Like the hyphy movement, like during that time, like it was, it was kind of lawless, man. Lawless. And then you add that with the bankruptcy in Vallejo. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Those, uh, like those first two years. When talk about defund the police, you ever want to look at what that looks like? That was Vallejo. There was like two cops on duty. Real shit. There was like two cops, yo. And then we'd have the police scanner. You could do anything you wanted during this time. Oh, that was ugly. Dude, if you Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say, man. That that was that was crazy. That was crazy. Dude. Muff, we knew it too. We knew it. We were like, man, what? They, and they would announce it too. They'd be like, only two cops. There was more than two cops, but they'd be like, only five cops on patrol. So then you start to hear on the radio. I, I'm not going to say anything else, but um, we would know exactly where they were. <laughs> this shit was horrible. Any, fu- any fucking way. Those people in them other cities, man, they didn't have that. They was cool. Like... But they wanted to be from where we were from, though. Well, that didn't make any sense. Why what, what the fuck do y'all want to be from here? The only reason we don't want to be from where you're from is because you want to be here. You're making it look weird. Why don't you do your own fucking thing? You know what I'm saying? Benicia did. Benicia, people probably look, don't, don't know what Benicia is, but Benicia is like a super small, kind of like a white, or at least that's what... That's what we used to say. I don't know if it really is or not, but like a little like nice fucking city. They had their own shit going on. Like I I never heard like the Benicia kids are coming over. Never. It was always like American Kane and Napa. You know what I'm saying? Like and everybody, and this is all I'm gonna say. Everybody from American Canyon has done me wrong. <laughs> I swear to God. I swear to God, yo, I was literally fucking around with somebody and I told her that too. I was like, cause she's from there and she tried to say she was from Vallejo, but I couldn't get nobody to vouch that. Anyway, that's not, that's not even important. Um, <clears throat> I told her this shit. I was like, Hey man, everybody from American Canyon has done me crazy. Don't do me crazy. She did me crazy. <laughs> crazy. I don't know what's going on in that city, man. I don't fucking know. But um, but yeah. All right, you guys, it's getting late. I'm gonna wind down. Thanks for kicking it with me. This was fun. We should do this type of shit. We should do like this wind down type of feel. Like once every five episodes, it should just be on some like let's just fucking talk. I feel like that's what it was. Like it wasn't no. I didn't even get to too many questions, man. Um, yeah, we're going to have these every five episodes where I'll catch up and just answer people's questions and eventually we'll start doing this live. And I do have a surprise for you guys. These podcasts are going to get better. Believe that. All right, you guys stay savage, be safe. Love you all. Peace.